Did you like Ready or Not? Well, then good. I think most people like that movie, right? Well, that's, as I said, excellent, because this movie is extremely similar. You know, uh, a pessimistic uh, downer of a person would say, you know, maybe, maybe Radio Silence uh, can only do one thing. But I would say, in a positive, uplifting way, that I think they're improving this thing that they do very well. Because while I enjoyed Ready or Not, Abigail is a much better movie. An improvement on what was already a solid film. Uh, both are about having to survive being locked in a very nice house while you're a target for murder. But Abigail is a lot funnier. Very funny movie. Uh, I mean, it's not like, I wouldn't... It's close to being a, a straight comedy. It's a funny movie. And it has a better high concept with the hunter being a little girl vampire rather than a cursed wealthy family. Uh, Abigail also has some really nice twists and turns that keep you engaged throughout the film. So try to go in with as few spoilers as possible because the story developments and a last minute surprise, which I see has already been ruined on Wikipedia. What a bummer. Uh, they do a lot to make this, to plus this film. So I was pleasantly surprised, and I hope you are as well. Also, with all due respect to Samara Weaving and Adam Brody, who I love, the cast here is just much stronger across the board, and it makes a big difference. Melissa Barrera teams up once again with the directing duo Radio Silence, who she started working with via the Scream franchise. And uh, as you might have heard, she was just fired from the Scream franchise because of her comments about the current Israel-Palestine conflict. So for better or worse, Abigail has become a referendum on whether or not Barrera is truly an asset to a film, both creatively and business-wise. Now, from a creative perspective, I think she definitely anchors this film. She looks amazing, she's extremely likable, and she continues to be an excellent leading lady in the horror genre. Uh, this is thanks not only to Barrera's work as an actress, but it's a good role. It's a very good role. Well-written and well-designed visually. Some very cool elements to this uh, role. Again, I don't want to give anything away. But her hair, makeup, and wardrobe choices are particularly flattering and appealing, I think, to both men and women. Business-wise, well, we'll have to wait and see what the box office is and if her supporters and fans show up. Uh, Review-wise, her involvement seems to have not hurt the film at all, and Barrera has been very professional advertising this film. She stood her ground, but she has not turned the Abigail publicity tour into an attack on the Scream franchise. So, you know, maybe she could, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But I think, you know, again, creatively, I think she is an, an asset to this film. Business-wise, you know, we have to see the box office. It's also worth noting that several of her Scream co-stars showed up to the Abigail premiere. Uh, maybe to support their Radio Silence directors, I don't think they actually took any photos with Barrera, but they were there, and at the very least, her involvement here did not keep them away. Uh, all right, Dan Stevens. Whew! Boy, is he having a great couple of weeks. First with Godzilla X Kong, where I thought he was excellent, and now Abigail. You know, Godzilla X Kong, really, you know, it's about the kaiju, right? But here, as I said, the cast makes a particularly big difference. So I think this would help his, you know, it's always good to be associated with a, a, a box office winner. And who knows, maybe he'll be associated with two box office winners after Abigail opens. But I think from an acting perspective, he really shines here. He does a lot of heavy lifting in a very complex role, and he's definitely the male lead opposite Barrera. You know, I didn't really love him on Downton Abbey. I know that he had a lot of fans on that show, but I was like, meh. Uh, but I, I have personally found him to be much more interesting as an actor once he left the show. But it hasn't been easy for him. However, he might finally be hitting his Hollywood stride. And good for him for not giving up, because he left Downton Abbey over a decade ago. It takes time. It takes time. To, I mean, sometimes it doesn't, but sometimes it does. And so I'm glad that his story is turning into an inspiring one. As for Catherine Newton, though, I feel so bad for her. I was talking to some uh, fellow press after the screening, and we all agreed that it's a, such a tragic shame that she was so awful in Quantumania, which has definitely hurt her career, but yet everywhere else she seems to be amazing. It's like, if only you could have brought this fire to Quantumania. 
Like, she was the best thing in Lisa Frankenstein. She's the only reason to watch that movie. She's great there. And she's hilarious here. Oh, a real, another real asset to this movie. Can't imagine it without her. I found the things that happen with her character particularly interesting and inspiring. What a hoot. Uh, Angus Cloud from Euphoria is also very, very funny. And it is so sad that this is his last film before he passed away. Touchingly, the film is dedicated to him. Kevin Durand, who he's been around Hollywood for a very long time. But, you know, I got to say he seemed refreshed here. I thought he did really nice work and stood out. Giancarlo Esposito is Giancarlo Esposito. And I'm sure he's collecting a paycheck here. But he's still in it. He's in it to win it. And while his role is extremely small, he's used very effectively. You know, a little Gian... Well, I'll take as much Giancarlo Esposito as I can get. And I felt... I felt, uh, uh, you know, uh, I felt my Giancarlo Esposito thirst was quenched. Uh, William Catlett, though, is the only actor who does not make a strong impression. There's supposed to be, like, this kind of romantic spark and connection between him and Barrera. And, you know, Barrera did her best. And he was fine, but I, I kept thinking... You know, I think that another stronger, more charismatic actor would have been able to make more of this opportunity. And then, ah, Alicia Weir as Abigail, a.k.a. Netflix's Matilda. Without any spoilers, let me just say that this is a very difficult role to pull off, and Weir is very well cast. Another person you would not have been able to make this movie. I mean, I guess, you you know, you never know. There are a lot of great actors out there. But Weir, you know, it's she's, she's just definitely... Another, another asset for the film. Uh, the dancing, the blood, and the preppiness, there was a surprising amount of ballet in it. They make this seem a bit like, not like a Megan ripoff, but certainly inspired by that film's success. They're like, ah, people like Megan. What can we do that is just enough like Megan to capitalize on that, but yet not actually be ripping it off? And here's your answer. I think Megan is sharper and more modern, uh, but I think... What's, it's interesting because what I like about this movie are the classic horror elements that it has and how it updates some horror mythos, let's say. Well, uh, you know, but at the same time being very uh, respectful of it and, you know, leaning into the, to the classic element as well. It's got like one foot in like a modern story, a horror, you know, monster story, but then also uh, one foot in like what made these, have made these so popular, you know, over the decades. If they want to make an Abigail 2, and I do see a path forward, I'd be interested in that. You know, I'm not definitely sold, but I, I'd want to take a look. The film is, again, nicely written. It's a, you know, if you're interested in being a screenwriter, this is a good film to study because not all your movies, particularly when you're just starting to get the hang of screenwriting, are going to be like your opus. But this is a really nice little script that you'd be able to sell, as was the case here, obviously. It's a slick script with a nice setup, the high concept angle with a vampire, good jokes, and a lot of surprises. Now, some of you might be like, is this just a bunch of jump scares? Yeah, it's a lot of jump scares, but you know, some of you complain about jump scares, but that seems to be what most horror and scary movies have. So, I mean, it seems okay to me, but I think there's a very good story. As I said, it's very funny. There's character development. I thought the mythos was well done. I, th I think it's very solid. It's not going to redefine the genre, but at a time when so many movies are poorly written, it's refreshing to see one with a nice, solid foundation that the actors and directors can build on. Also, the production design team. Single movie locations can often feel extremely cheap. Uh, for instance, Violent Night, that all took place largely in one house, and that felt more like a set than a real location. It also didn't feel genuinely like an upscale house. But the house here, oh, it's great. It's very much a part. There's this one statue that I'm like, that is so made of, that's not real stone. But I didn't care because it was cool. So I was like, oh, that's pretty neat. But anyway, the house looks cool. It's a very much a part of the story. And as our characters explore it, let's just say I was impressed with how much variety they're able to get out of this single location. I'm sure it's mostly a set, by the way. It's not an actual, probably not an actual house. But I liked it. I was, I was like a video game a little bit in some regard, or a board game, right? Where you're like, oh, now we're in this new part of the house. This is very different. I love this. Uh, as for the directors, uh, Matt Bettinelli, Open, and Tyler Gillette, a.k.a. Radio Silence, they're not visual mavericks, let's be honest. They never really impressed me with any of their shots. 
But I think that what sets them apart and why they're finding success in Hollywood is their clear ability to be able to put together a strong overall package, especially in the horror genre. Uh, find something you're good at and stick with it and get better, which is what I think they're very much doing. They've built a strong track record. And I think that while they still don't have a breakout movie, I'm sorry, even still, I don't think they have a film where you're like, wow, these guys are the, are the sauce or whatever, right? I think they've earned the trust of horror fans. I think they're solid. And they also have the ability, it seems so far at least, to please horror fans while also being able to loop in casual horror fans like myself. I mean, I looked at the floor a lot during the movie because it was scary, but I still enjoyed it. I had a good time. And while I wouldn't watch Ready or Not again, I would watch this movie again. I liked it. Uh, supposedly, this movie was inspired by a classic Universal monster uh, movie. And I'm not going to say which one because it would spoil part of the film. But even while I enjoyed this film, as I just said, and would watch it again, I still don't understand why Universal is doing such small-scale versions of their iconic characters. I mean, yeah. Tom Cruise's The Mummy didn't work, but I don't know why we have to go so far in the other direction. This seems just a little bit not enough for considering how, how big these characters are. So yeah, Abigail is not this crazy new horror movie, but it's a really solid one, which I enjoyed. And if you want, if like, if you want to go to the theater, this is a great reason to go. If you don't really want to spend the money on this, then I think when it comes out on digital and eventually streaming, you're going to be very happy with it then. It's a very, very solid film with some great performances. I liked, I, I really, and a good script. I enjoyed it. I really did. So that's my review of Abigail hitting theaters tonight. Uh, are you going or are you going to wait for digital or streaming? Or might you pass on it all together? I wouldn't do that. I'd check it out at some point for sure. So share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.